Hello and welcome to day 30 of the Halloween Craft Countdown, where I'm releasing a new Cricut Craft every day for the whole of October. It is so close to Halloween now, so I bet you're thinking about Halloween candy bags. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use clip art designs from websites such as Design Bundles, Creative Fabrica, or even free websites of which I will tell you later on in this video to make personalized postcard designs which you can stick onto the front of a candy bag just like this. These are really fun because you can use all sorts of images to make something really personal and unique to the person you're giving it to. So let's jump into Design Space and I'll show you how to make a print and cut image using purchase graphics. In this video, I'm going to be using some clip art style graphics to create a print and cut image to stick onto a gift bag for Halloween. And these are the images I'm going to be using. So they're from a website called creativefabrica.com and I have the monthly subscription, which means that I can download as many of the graphics I want without paying anything extra. So if you're also signed up to that, then you'll be able to download these graphics um, without paying any more. So I'll put a link in the description of this video to where you can find them. If you don't have the Creative Fabrica subscription, then you can download these and just pay a little bit as a one-off cost to get these exact graphics. If you use loads of graphics and SVG files in your crafting, then I do recommend looking into getting the subscription because it gives you thousands and thousands and thousands of different designs to choose from, which you can download as many as you want every month. So I'm going to use this Halloween Kids uh, collection from the uh, Creator Pretty Graphic and I'm also going to use this pattern collection by the same creator. Um, so this has got some nice little Halloween patterns which I'll use as the background for my sticky label. So because I've got the subscription I can just click download. If you don't have it then yours will say purchase or buy now or something like that. Um, so go ahead and choose some graphics. It doesn't have to be these particular ones, but any ones that you want to add to your label. And then we will open up Design Space and see how to put it all together. Here's my new window in Design Space. Now I've already measured my gift bags, so I know what size I want to make my label. I'm going to go into Shapes and choose a square. I want to go up to where it says Size in the top menu and click the padlock icon so that I can... Um, open it up and turn it into a rectangle. Now I measured my gift bag in centimetres and my design space is currently set to inches so I just need to change it to centimetres a minute. So um, I'll click the three little lines in the top left, go to settings and then change the units from imperial to metric. So metric means centimetres. Um, so now I can change that width to 10 and the height to 14 centimeters and that is the size that will fit onto my bag. Generally I prefer working in inches so I'm just going to change it back now that I've done that in centimeters I don't need to keep it in there. Okay so this is going to be the outer side of my label and I think what I want is a little black line around the edge and then I'll have the pattern inside. So I can make this one black and then I'm going to right click and press duplicate and make a rectangle slightly smaller to go in the middle so that I'm just going to have a nice thin black border. And for now I'll just make this one white so that I can see that border a little bit easier. So I'll try and make that roughly the same and to make sure it's exactly in the middle click and drag a box around it and then get into a line and press center. And now I know that that white box is exactly in the middle of the black one. I want to fill in this rectangle with the patterns that I downloaded from Creative Fabrica. So the first thing to do is to upload those patterns. So go to upload on the left and then under pattern fill, click upload pattern. Find the pattern you want on your computer or you can click and drag it in. Once that's loaded, you can then hit save. You can give it a name if you want to, or just leave it as the default. I'm gonna hit save on that, and it might take a little while to load because it's quite a big image file. My pattern's now uploaded, so I just got a message to say that it is there. So I can click cancel on this screen, and then click my white rectangle, 
and then there's a drop down called fill along the top. Click into there and change it to print. And then in the box next to it at the moment it says print type color but you can change that to pattern. The pattern you've just uploaded should be the very first one on the list so if you click on that then it might take a while to load but it will fill in your rectangle with that pattern. If you want to make changes then look at the edit pattern link at the bottom of this little pop-up and then you can change the scales so if I change that to 90 for example it's going to make it all a little bit bigger and it really does take a little while to load sometimes. You can also move things about if you want to by changing the horizontal and vertical. You can rotate your pattern or you can flip it. So you have all of these different choices. So here's my pattern now that I've zoomed in a bit. Alright so I want to add a white rectangle inside of this to add my text to so I'm going to add the name of um, who this is going to and a little happy Halloween message. So I'll go into shapes again and choose another square and then tick the little padlock icon so I can turn it into a rectangle and then I'm going to make that black because again I'm going to make a little black border right click and duplicate and then this one will be white and then I'll make it a bit smaller again and just drag that about until I've got a border size that I'm happy with. I want the white to be exactly in the middle of the black so I'm going to select everything and then go into align and then press center horizontally and now all of this is centered horizontally so my pattern along the left and right is the same on both sides but I also want to make sure that this white is perfectly in the middle of the black vertically so I can choose one layer in the layers panel the white rectangle press control on my keyboard and then choose the black one underneath go into align and this time I will choose center vertically so now I know that that white is perfectly in the middle of the black going to zoom in so it's a little easier to see and next I'm going to add the wording to this rectangle so I'll go into text and then let's go happy Halloween I'm going to change the font to a bit more of a Halloweeny one um, I've got one in here called Halloween Pumpkin that I quite like and again this is from Creative Fabrica so I'll drop a link to that in the description of this video if you want to get the same one. So let's put that there and then I'm going to add the name underneath. So let's go, uh, what name shall we choose? Abigail. I want to change the font for this one so let's go and choose um, a nice script font I think. Here we go. So when you choose script fonts Design Space puts this big ugly gap between the letters. To fix that right click on it and press ungroup and then I'm going to zoom in so it's easier to see. What this has done is it's split all of the letters onto their own individual layer so you can click and drag them so that the letters are touching as they're supposed to. I wish Design Space would fix this. <laughs> and then when you're happy with how it's all looking, click and drag a box around it and then down the bottom of the layers panel press world and that will join them all together again. Now I'm going to move this over here and make it a bit bigger and then I think I will make it a purple colour to match the stars in the background and then the happy Halloween let's go for a yellow. I want to make sure my text is in the middle horizontally of the white box so I can select all of those three layers, go into align and center horizontally. And then I know that's all in the middle and then I'm happy with that G going off the bottom. I think that looks quite nice. 
All right, so my label is getting there, um, but now I need to add in some images. So to insert your images, click upload and then upload image, and then you can drag and drop in the pictures. If you're given a choice between JPEG or PNG, you want to choose the PNG ones as they'll probably have a transparent background. We're using this for print then cut, so choose complex and then continue. And then as this already has a transparent background, which I know because I've got this checkerboard effect, I can just click continue again. Make sure you choose save as a print then cut image and then press save. Once that's loaded, click the image and then press insert images. And it might take a while to appear as it's a high quality graphic, but once it's there, you can just resize it to however big you want it to go and position it on your label. I'm going to do the same thing with another one of the images. So go to upload, upload image, drag and drop in the image, click complex and then continue, continue again, save as a print and cut image and hit save. And then when that's loaded, click the image and then press insert images to put it onto your design. And then I'm going to zoom out a bit as that's really big and make it smaller. And then just play about with it until it's where I want it to go. So I'm trying not to overlap the design outside the rectangle because I want to fit it inside this rectangle so that it will um, cut out as one rectangle. So let's just position that one there. And I'm kind of happy with how that's overlapping the word Abigail a little bit. I think that's fine. But I'm just going to put one more picture in the middle. So let's just do the upload process again really quick. I just think it needs one more little thing in the middle of the two girls. So my pumpkin is here and that's huge so make it smaller. And then see where I want it to go. So don't worry if the pictures look a little bit blurry. Sometimes Design Space makes them look blurry um, to help it load faster, but when you print it, it should be fine. So there we go, there's my three images. And I'm happy with how this is looking, but I'm just gonna go ahead and save it. Um, so let's go test. Uh, bag label, that's what I'm doing and hit save. So it's a good practice to get into to save fairly regularly just so that you don't lose any of your work if anything happens. So I'm happy with how this is looking. So now it is ready for me to start thinking about doing my print then cut. I have a separate video on print and cut so I would recommend checking that out if it's something you're new to but I will just walk you through some of the important steps before we do that. If we were to click make it at the moment, it's going to split all of our graphics apart. And actually we want them all to stay on the rectangle. And it's also got all of these squares as cut rather than print. And that's not what we want. We want the whole thing to print as one rectangle. So I'm gonna click a box around everything. And then at the top of the layers panel, press group. This has grouped everything together, so now I can um, press the little arrow next to where it says group to minimize it. Right click on that and press duplicate and that will make a copy. So I'm going to hide that copy by pressing the eye icon and the reason I've got that is so that if I want to go back and change any of the layers in the future, I've got a copy of them. Because what I'm going to do with the one that's still showing is I'm going to merge this all into one print and cut layer so that instead of cutting out from all of those different mats, it will do it all together. So to do that, make sure you've got your group selected and then down the bottom of the layers panel, press flatten. 
you can see this has got rid of all of those black outlines around all of the text which was showing that they were cut images so now it is print then cut so when I click make it now you see everything is in the correct position and it's only one mat that I'm going to need it's going to put everything together don't worry about this black outline around the edge that is something that your Cricut machine will put on there so that it knows where to cut so um, don't worry about that it won't be um, cut out but it does need to print so when this is fed into the Cricut machine to cut it out it's just going to cut the outline of the black part of the image that we actually made and because we've flattened all the layers, it's not going to try and cut out all of the letters and the words and the girls and the pumpkin separate. All it's going to cut is that edge around the outside. And of course, if you decide to, you could just print this on your printer and then cut it by hand or with a paper trimmer. So if you are not sure on how to do print and cut or if you just prefer to do it by hand, you absolutely can do that. Um, but just follow the steps first to print it out on your home printer. So here's my design cut out and ready to go onto my little bag. So you can see it fits nicely on there and then um, you could either double sided tape it or use some glue. I think I'll put on double sided tape because that's um, it sticks straight away so I'm not going to have to wait for it to dry. So I'll just run a little bit down each of those sides and then peel off the backing and then all I need to do is just stick it onto my gift bag and try and get it vaguely straight and then that is my little personalized gift bag finished so you could print out another one for the back if you wanted to but this is ready for me to add in my treats. So let's see what we've got. I've got some ghost poop here and this printable is free on my blog. I'll put a link to it in the description so I can add that in. And then I've got my little treat bag filled with sweets that I made in one of my other videos with my design sticker that we made in Design Space so that can go in there as well and then you could add in whatever else you want to make this up as much um, treats or sweets or games I could add in the colouring cards that I made earlier in the countdown that would be really cute um, or I could put in some more stickers that I designed so let's just add all of those in there and then whatever you put in it, this would be a really nice personalised gift, either for your children or their friends or um, your friends, family members, colleagues, <laughs> whoever you want to give it to. And because it's got their name on it, it just makes it that little bit extra special. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to design your own gift bag labels in Design Space. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment below or subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more Cricut Craft tutorials. Thank you for watching. Bye.